wrestling has more than one royal family. What up, it's your boy T Burn Reaction. So, I'm about to check out a video from about the uh, current WWE champion, Cody Rose, as well, too, as we ready to head to SummerSlam this weekend. And we're going to take a look at his. If I get it up real quick. 10 things he that the WWE superstar Cody Rose can't live without while in the 10 essential episodes of uh, on uh, GQ channel. So, without further ado, we we'll check out 10 things that your current, our current WWE champion, Cody Rose, the undisputed champion, Cody Rose, can't live without. Let's get it. So, GQ, what do you want to talk about? Mm -hmm. I'm the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes, and here are 10 things I can't live without. Oh, My first essential... I would say is the most essential. Of course. And it is a photo of, course. of my wife, my daughter, and myself. Not just a, a photo of family, which obviously that's why it's essential, but at a certain point in the past year, going into WrestleMania, my tour bus set on fire outside of Lincoln Financial Field, and I had a few minutes, more like a few seconds, and this was the first thing I grabbed. Mm -hmm. These are the whys in what I do in the entertainment business and pro wrestling, the suspension of disbelief, whatever, however you look at it, competitive or performance. It's a shark infested show business. I think maybe I used to be one of those sharks and then I met this lady and had this beautiful Aww. little daughter and yeah. that changed everything for me. So they're the ultimate why and what Ooh. I do. Oh yeah, the hat he had on it's um and the um it is on the, an American on the uh, flag baseball cap USA the documentary stars and he had it on baseball cap. If you go into mm -hmm. a gas station, you can find it. If you go on Amazon, you can find it. I'm very lucky I get to be in sports entertainment, and pro wrestling, because it's not about politics. It's about hey, this is one thing that we like, regardless of where we sit on the spectrum. We like this together. Let's do this pro wrestling thing. But yeah, this hat goes everywhere with me because it's also my little, you know, incognito hat to the airport. I've been told that my my incognito mm -hmm. outfit is actually so covert, it's overt. Because I always <laughs> wear this hat and then I'll wear a sleeveless hoodie with the hood pulled over it. Try to cover right. up the tattoo if I'm just trying to move through. But I, I can say that with wrestling having hit this new phase of popularity, it's not as easy as it used to be. It's by no means Probably a not. problem. It's the greatest that. complaint to have, but it's not just mm -hmm. one or two people anymore. It's become kind of a, a madhouse whenever uh, I go anywhere. But yeah, yeah it's also part of my little cave as that. we like to say in the wrestling yep. business. Of course, of course, you gotta take the belt with him. Manifestation, of this physical form of the, the title story, belt. This man. dates mm. way, 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 way back, 50 plus years of history when it was originally the WWWF. This mm. is even pre-WWF. This was the World Wide Wrestling Federation's mm -hmm. championship belt, the same one that Buddy Rogers had, mm -hmm. the same one that superstar Billy Graham had, New York legend Bruno San Martino mm -hmm. had, and it is the same title that in the garden in 1977, my dad put around his waist, went up on the buckle and held it up only to have not won the title based on a technicality of mm -hmm. someone going over the top rope. So he had it and he let the people see that he had it and have that moment, but then it was taken away from him. That became it, eight years old. I want to win this title and while he was still alive, I wanted to hand it to him. Mm -hmm. The whole tagline of finish the story it stems from this moment yes. in New York in 1977. And mm -hmm. I feel like at WrestleMania 39, last year's WrestleMania, everybody thought, oh, well, that's the most obvious thing ever. Cody's gonna win the WWE Championship and start that, that run the first time ever a Rhodes with the WWE title. Didn't happen. The task then got even hairier in a sense that The Rock decided to show back up and decided, oh, I'm just gonna take the match that Cody was slotted for. And in the end, <laughs> all of this chaos, something magical happened. We get to yeah. WrestleMania 40 with yes. this story. I'd say Woo. one of the things I like about the title a lot is it's no like, longer... Folks can say that it should happen last year. I feel the same too, but at the same time, what we got out of this and that match and everything, 
was worth it as well too though that's why i don't like folks i mean i mean yes that's probably a part why you know is um is why the uh the run is like a lot of people's claiming the run's not as great as it is because of the high station came after it as well too but i feel like it's a slow cook it's a slow cook it's slow cooking there people folks just impatient mainly folks in that submission about our folks that did not want cody to win the title in the first place you know the bloodline fan whether the bloodline fans folks who still borrow they didn't get rock versus roman or just straight up cody haters well too i deal with it almost every day being an own wrestling fan, being a wrestling fan, being a wrestling fan in group as well too. Even so, folks came on my comment on my on my video about the Damian Priest over Cody thing as well too, saying we object and all that, whatever. I mean, but at the same time, I feel like you know it's still it's gonna be great after this little feud with Solo and. I mean, I doubt he losing it, but me never knows. Well, too, if he loses, make it a little interesting that he's getting back after work because of Roman. Who knows? But at the same time, we definitely going to get him in or in soon, so it's really going to cook. Well, there and now, let's keep going. No matter, it's not a nameplate. Now it's all about your individual mm. side plates. I also love that this title is specifically this generation's title. Mm -hmm. I am fond of the Winged Eagle, which is a title from the 1990s. Yeah. Hulk Hogan wore it, Ultimate Warrior wore it, Ric Flair wore it, Bret Hart wore it. And I am actively trying to find a way to mm -hmm. get that into the WWE world. But this is also the title that was around Roman Reigns' waist the night I beat him. And there's a part of that that makes me more linked to this look and this aesthetic for yes. WWE Championship than ever. Oh, of course. Another essential item oh, happens to be on me at all times. This is a Rolex Datejust Jubilee bracelet. Rolexes are all special in their own way, but this mm. is my father's Rolex. Right. I have a couple that I've purchased. I have an Omega that I really love as well, but this oh, one yeah. is the That's most right. important with, um, in the collection. Around Rod the time I graduated high school, knowing I didn't want to pursue anything in college, mm. knowing all I ever wanted to be was a pro wrestler, I got a little worried, a little gun shy that I wasn't big enough. I thought I'd be 6'6". Six, six. Well, it turned out I wasn't 6'6". Six, six. Oh, okay, like, so his, like his brother. I decided, you know what, I'm going to go to the Howard Fine Acting Studio in L.A. I'm going to go to L.A. And then mm. if I get big as an actor, I can jump into wrestling. Absolute yep. nonsense. He did everything you could possibly do right as a father. Wow. I remember leaving that morning to drive my Volkswagen Jetta from Roswell, Georgia, all the way mm -hmm. to Studio City, California. I'm seeing what people say in the comments. Cody, Cody, $10, somebody hit the Cody Raheem Rose. I love it. <laughs> I don't care what everybody say. People, you know, people, people, my, my people like, like they hate this thing and they think it's cold. I don't care. I think it's fun. I don't care. And cash. And he had given me that to make my way out there and start and get a little place. He even set me up with mm -hmm. a job. I'd find out later uh, after he passed when going around the room with all the goods. You get this, you get this. Nobody got the Rolex. So I asked my mom and she told me, yeah, I thought you knew. He pawned that mm. to get the money for you to go to LA. Wow. Three men, Bruce Pritchard, Triple H, and Nick Khan, they knew where to go. Wow. And this was something I received after receiving what was already the greatest night of my professional career in WrestleMania uh -huh. 40, uh, right there in Gorilla for the world to see. And it's as essential as essential Wow. Gets. Right here, coming in, Suavecito. Suavecito pomade, to be specific, mm. and it's an outstanding hair product. My mom, oh, the Cuban side of her family, well. I didn't oh. realize I was gonna have the thickest hair imaginable amongst my friends, and that it would grow at a rate that is almost terrifying, especially now that all my friends are around me balding. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm not, but this is <laughs> the only stuff Yo. that they actually can do anything with this mess. It's got to have product in it. The other element of it is I am not a natural blonde, so I am uh, coloring this hair on a frequent basis, especially mm -hmm. with the amount it grows. This helps uh, me on all ends, not just the thick hair, but the color treated hair. Suavecito. My lovely wife gave me a pair of Louis of Vuitton cufflinks. These are not my Louis Vuitton cufflinks. These are the first cufflinks I ever got their bullets. Mm. It was at a time oh. when I had left WWE, which was unheard of. You know, nobody quit WWE. They'd fire you mm -hmm. or you'd stay for life. And I was a Nepo baby, an nepotism hire, <laughs> dad and brother. I was going to have this gig forever. Mm. I felt I, I needed to get out and 
actually make an attempt yep. at it. And I went Better all over the world wrestling, independent promotions, did. different companies, refused to sign a contract. I'm bringing the same brand, the American Nightmare, the same walkout song, Kingdom's Point. I'm bringing that everywhere I go along the way. That's I crazy. That's cool as hell. He brought that all the way over back to um, WWE, man. That's, that's still awesome, though, you know. Because it's like it's very rare somebody bring their team. They get a, a a theme they have trademark outside WWE and bring it back to WWE as their own. It's pretty awesome right there. I joined what's called the Bullet Club in New Japan Pro too Wrestling, sweet. and they actually and gave they me but still name, too sweet. The American Nightmare. Mm -hmm. I own a lot of cufflinks. I have it's, a lot of Star Wars. It's cool. He still a lot to them because I think people. No, I'm a big, massive Star Wars fan, but the go-to ones are usually my Louis Vuitton, the little dots. Mm. I feel most comfortable in a suit. I have some of the cheapest suits. I have some of the most expensive suits. Mm, it's okay. all about the fit. And especially with what I do, you're looking like for a little splash of color. You're <laughs> looking to be under the lights, under the camera. Oh, well, SmackDown's a blue lighting treatment. Raw's a red lighting treatment. How do you, you don't wanna blend in. How do you separate yourself? So it's all about the fit. Yeah, this is one of my most essential items. Mm. It is a rock. This one is special because my daughter made it at a oh. art studio and she's only three. So she's just now starting to actually put the finishing touches on things herself. But yeah, Liberty Runnels, you know, sometimes she'd leave a plushie behind in my bag or something like that. And I'd want to keep it because that's, you know, I have, I have that connection to her, but I didn't have anything that I carried with me. My dad always had trinkets that we made him and gave him, and he put him in his suitcase. My sister had made this little plush mouse. His name was Coco Jiwo. So this stays in my, my travel bag. But yeah, this is a rock. Not to be confused with the rock. This is just a rock. <laughs> there it is. Oh! Nintendo Switch. Hey, you gamer. I got one too. I don't have enough time and commitment to jump into a modern, big time, console game like an Elden Ring. However, I can get on the SNES collection on my Switch and I can play mm. Donkey Kong all day long. Oh yeah. It is absolutely essential for me. This is like low-key made to like most I have bought I have games that's like newly to uh Switch, but most of the games I got is like the games was like kinda of has nostalgia to as well too. Like the Street Fighter games, the new the, the Ninja Turtle uh collection and the other game they had when it was like they brought back the arcade style as well too like that's why because it's like that's why i use them put the games up on my switch so if it's like something that's, that's like on any other that's on other systems is multiple switch one or two and it's like big time i use them i'm gonna mainly put it on my ps5 but it was like nostalgia games like that i'm also use it on the switch no use of doing it because i mean it'll be the same graphic anyway so yeah and so he's kind of like me. And also, I play, like I said, I played the, the, the classic collection, like Nintendo collection, and Super Nintendo, N64, the Game Boy, and the Genesis Wall well too. So, yeah. Let's go top five overall on the game side of things. Uh oh. Number five. Ghost of Tsushima. Ghost of Tsushima works really great for I me. I still got finished my game. game. I've been getting, I've been playing my other newer games like W2K and uh, NBA, and it's more common one. I'm like, like, I'm like investing in that because the vision will keep me going every time. Street Fire, whenever it is, whenever a new new guy get at it, and and there's a new mission, I'll do that. Um, that's many time, but yeah, I gotta get back into Ghost of Tsushima, and I'm still can't wait for Spider-Man 2 DLC for Carnage. I know they're gonna have one soon. History of Japan's included in there. Love that. That's gonna be my number five. Number four is going to be the original Halo Combat Evolved. Okay. That was the first, and obviously I know we had FPS's before. We had GoldenEye, gosh, it's Only the thing. Dangdus, it's the best, but Halo mm -hmm. had a streamlined element to it. I am a terrible marksman in Halo, but if you put me on the back of a Warthog, I can get that far. Nice. Three spot, Red Dead Redemption 2. Mm. Never even played the he first Red Dead taste. Redemption. I didn't even it's know what was going on, but Arthur's story. Plus, I have this love for America and the history of America. And here you are going through this period uh, post Civil War. What's it like? So I loved Red Dead Redemption 2. Alrighty, and we're down to the, the final two. Here we go. It's easy for me. Number two is 
the original Metal Gear Solid. Mm. It's a oh, game yes. changer. And when the movie comes out and it's a big blockbuster, massive hit, and everyone's like, oh, where's the source material? It's right here. Metal Gear Solid for the original PlayStation. It, it changed everything it about did. modern games. It Number did. one, right to it, the main event, the champion of all games. This is The Legend of Zelda. Oh Ocarina yeah, I've been ringing time, time. yeah. And there'll be people who watch this and are like, oh, Majora's Mask. Majora's Mask is like DLC, dog. It's great, but it's an extension of Ocarina of Time. Those are my top five. Mm -hmm. Of course, boost. boost. Of course. Good Got old it. fashioned. Of course. Pro wrestling boots. Of course. Which are apparently are out of style these days, but these are traditional. Well, I guess not so traditional. And what makes them not so traditional is I don't do a lace up. I do a zip and a couple buttons. Always the top two buttons. I never button the bottom button. You got it. Well, I see what you mean by says not so like traditional as much because you know a lot of people done got the kick pads with sneakers and the sneakers and stuff like that, which I'm a fan of. I'm actually I'm a fan of that more than the boots as well too. But I understand the boots. But yeah, I'm a fan of the kick pads, the kick pads, the sneakers, or sneakers in general. This Seg One promo three-piece suit, ready to rock. You've got a match in Seg Six, so you got to get dressed. The last thing I got time to do is individually lace mm -hmm. my wrestling boots. So these have been my go-to, and these are important. These are essential. Here's evidence that they're essential. Told you about that picture earlier of my family. The only other item that I got off the bus when my air conditioning unit set ablaze was my boots. Mm -hmm. Somebody was asking the other day. They were trying to define like a specific point when things really changed for me. One of those specific points is the first time I put on the robe that I have now, which people liken to the character Homelander from The Boys. Mm. I think that's more of the two blonde people. The design for all of my gear, the design and the work itself comes from a woman named Sandra Gray, who has outfitted almost every wrestler ever in every mm. company and has been doing it since is early that, 90s is that the same lady um let me see Sandra that's the same lady that um gray yup the black lady yup mm -hmm. did she get back to Dottie E because she's definitely she's still doing his she must be back in Dottie E or she's just doing it in general because she was for man she was with, with AEW for a while no she retired actually oh all right but nice you might be mad at us if you showed this, so go go ahead. Uh, either way, nice, nice to as well too. So um, yeah, shout out shout out to Joe Cody Row. This is a cool video to watch as well too. So yeah, other than that, if you like my reaction, like, share, subscribe my YouTube channel as well too. Um, of course I saw I was looking at kind of people saying the Homelander. I can't wait for the Homelander. I like. Of course, be I like the folks that like really be hyped for a uh. A uh, hill turn so bad is ridiculous. I mean, time I'm gonna be honest, but yeah, other than that, if you like my reaction, like, share, subscribe on my YouTube channel, it's your boy T. Press signing off. One love.